South Africa is probably one of the most over-traded markets in the world when it comes to commercial property and more and more South African companies growing by acquisition. And for our next guest's company, RMH, it's a second property sector investment in as many months. RMH Holdings last announced it was to buy 25% in the property group Atterbury and recently the intention to acquire a third of the urban renewal property group Propertuity Development Company. It's behind the Maboneng precinct. This is The Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight I'm joined by Chief Executive of RMH, Herman Bosman, to discuss the new trail of acquisitions. But let's just give some context to RMH, Rand Merchant Bank Holdings. This is the the wise men of, uh, of RMB and First Rand, Laurie and GT and Paul, right. one of their investment vehicles, yes. which traditionally held stakes in banks. So, so RMH is the traditional one, the historic one which held basically all the stakes that, that was in the, f in the wider group. In 2010, we split it out. There's a company called RMI, yep. which holds the insurance assets. Yep. And then it's RMH, which before the property investments had first rand, 34% in first rand as its only investment. Okay, so this is diversification then of RMH right. into property. Why property? I think we, we see firstly that the financial capacity that, we've, that we have in, in RMH, which, we, which is largely untapped, can be utilized to, to have some diversification in the portfolio. Uh, we believe that the cash elements in terms of property once yielding is, is are very interesting dynamic for us, as well as the fact that, that there's, a, there's sort of a, a, a earnings diversification. Mm -hmm. a, a, although both banking and property are insurance, are interest rate linked. But they, they're, inter they're, inter they're intertwined. I mean, you're not Correct. really diversifying that much. You're not getting we, too far. We basically looked at our portfolio a while ago and said that, that our exposure to property in South Africa was less than 1% in the wider group. So we feel that, similar to what we do elsewhere, we want to back and partner owner-managed cultures and owner-managed entrepreneurs, such as Louis van der Watt and Jonathan Liebman, obviously. Now, I mean, Atterbury is interesting. So you go, you go into almost opposite extremes of the property sector, because in Atterbury, it's brand new developments. It's Mall of Africa. It's, 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 it's housing developments. I mean, you, you, this is a really big bet on the long-term sustainability of South Africa as an economy, where a lot of people are losing faith. You guys are committing real money. Uh, so, so I think the South Africa question is beyond, it, beyond a shadow of a doubt we are committed to South Africa. We, we are op optimistic. There are always going to be cycles and short-term pessimism or short-term volatility. But longer term, this is, this is where we, the bulk of our investment will be, will be housed. As far as property is concerned, um, I spoke about the fact that we were underexposed. The way we want to approach this is not as a fixed income investment, uh, not as a yielding mm. investment per se. Uh, we are equity investors, long-term equity investors, and we, we want to, to make an equity play of development profits, mm -hmm. other services such as asset management and facilities management, and we also want to invest in internalized mancos. So basically a vertically integrated... Internalized mancos, yes. and that is English for what? So that the, the company that's actually doing the management or the development and the actual properties which are being developed are all in one. Yeah. So, so when we look at an Atterbury or Jonathan Lieben, we, we invest alongside the management teams and everything they do in property will be aligned with us as, as their partners. Now, uh, Jonathan Lieben is an interesting case in point because he has a guy who uh, bought his first flat at the age of 18 with some help from an uncle, I think, was the first funding. And that was his first property and he gradually built single premises and ultimately um, is buying up city blocks of downtown Johannesburg. Anybody who's been to Arts on Main, I think that was the first part mm. of this Maboneng development, which is extraordinary. And it's almost going block by block by block in inner city Johannesburg, rejuvenating something that 30 years ago was regarded as a basket case. Yeah, I, I think it, we, we, we've looked at city rejuvenation um, schemes globally. And I think, yes, cities go through cycles. Um, and we do believe that the infrastructure that you, that you have in Johannesburg, the centrality of it, makes for a long-term investment proposition. The way Jonathan is, is doing it is quite visionary in, in our minds. I think they, he's not only trying to develop a single block or a single facet of, of life being residential, commercial or industrial, but he's, he's taking a holistic view and, and looking at the, at the whole precinct as a not, an, not only an experiment, but really a, a work in progress um, and the one one property and the one improvement obviously feeds off the other. So you're taking an equity stake, a third of the shares in property there, but also he's got his eyes on Durban and he started yes. in Durban 
seeing a similar opportunity of a, a rundown, a really badly degraded city centre, and saying, is, there is, where there's muck, there's money, is, is the old-fashioned saying from the north of England. Yeah, I think we, we would be cautious. Um, we're doing, doing Johannesburg first, and he has made some investments in Pretoria as well as in Durban. And I think it's the same theme. The, the, the point is that the, that the, the, vest, the vested or the established infrastructure in cities are expensive to replicate. People want to be close to where they work and live and, and obviously school. And, and those are the themes that, we, that we're backing in this, in this regard. So many people are absolutely paranoid about the future of their country. I saw Christo Visa the other day and I said to him, you have lived through and worked through, not emphasizing his age in any mm -hmm. way, but um, he went through 1976 and the Soweto uprising. He would have gone through the Rubicon speech. He would have gone through the uncertainty of the early 1990s following the unbanning of political parties and uh, the rise of trade unionism and the fear um, that South Africa would turn into more of a socialist than a capitalist state. And he says, crisis brings opportunity. Are, are, you, are, are you having a sense of unease in the business environment that you're capitalizing on right now? I don't think we're trying to capitalize on that. I think what, what we do believe is that, firstly, there are cycles in, in politics, in social economics, in whichever s sphere of life, there, there are going to be cycles. Our investment proposition and our investment horizon is beyond these cycles. So that's the first point. We long-term... So we should be able to bear with, with, with short-term concerns. Of course, there are anxieties, and, and I think we are all working very hard to address those. I mean, the you talk, you're talking about the presidential working groups and working with Pravin Gordon yeah. and getting the work streams going, that sort of stuff going. I think it's, it's all of that, plus at, at a very basic level, the South Africans are a very resourceful people, and we've, we've, we've come through many worse crises than this before. So I'm totally in, in Christo Visa's court. Um, what I like about the fact that you are with the presidential working groups, and you, and you, but you're also committing capital at the same time as doing that, because my sense of it is that we, we're reaching a bit of a bottleneck right now in terms of um, there's lots of talking about plans, and we can put lots, lots of things down on paper, but South African companies are sitting on massive balance sheets, huge amounts of capital that is not being applied in a gr with a growth mindset in South Africa. You, you, you're, you're, you are doing precisely that. I, I think we, we have the benefit that we were underexposed in certain areas. So I think it's relatively easy to, to deploy capital into those mm. spaces. For, for corporate, it is harder to deploy into spaces where they're already exposed and where they have choices. Either do they do nothing or expose themselves to other geographies. Or take their capital elsewhere. Yes. Yeah. I mean, so but, but uh, uh, what, what is the strategy, though? Because we see Patrice Motsepe and he's hired the two Johans out, out of Sunlam, out of Sunlam Investment Management, and the former chief executive of, of Sunlam, the group, Joh Johan uh, van Sale and Johan van der Marwe, and, and he's given them a pot of money to go and invest. And they're going around, you know, not throwing it out like mm -hmm. candy to kids, but they certainly are capitalizing on opportunities. Mm -hmm. There seems to be isolated pockets, but... A, a growing enthusiasm for opportunities in South Africa? What's, what's your sense of it? So I think the, the job that we have as, as investment team at, at RMI and RMH are, are, are threefold. Firstly, we, in a very small way, try and optimize what we have. We have some fantastic um, assets. We have even better s uh, CEOs and management teams, and, and we work with them to see whether we can optimize what we have. That's still the, the biggest opportunity. The second opportunity is what we've described. We diversify into property, asset management, and looking at two, or two other three things. But it may also mean that that diversification could be offshore. Yeah. Okay. And the third thing we do... Well, suddenly the, the UK is 15% cheaper in random yes. than it was a month ago. So, I mean, yeah. you, you'd be mad to ignore opportunities sure. that present themselves cyclically as well. 100%. The, the third thing we do is to try and modernize the portfolio. So we do look at at the future trends, whether it's technology, regulation, demographics, whatever the, those trends may be, and say, do the, does the portfolio as we see it at the moment stack up to the future trends? If not, we can either try and influence, as I said, or we can make, make um, investments into new companies, such as merchant capital, which we've invested in, in recently. We hope to find the next discovery or outsurance. No, but, but that, those, are, those are the gems. I mean, you either right. grow them yourselves, of course. Um, people come to you. Uh, Adrian Gore went off to, to Laurie and said, I've got an idea. And, and Laurie gets, you still mentioned Discovery today, and Laurie Dippenard gets the light in his eyes that Jonathan Lieberman gets when you talk about the inner city of Johannesburg. It's that frisson, that excitement, that exactly. uh, the, the people who are wedded to great concepts get. So um, that's what we're trying to, mm. to do. I think just g getting back to, to your point on, on Brexit, Yes, the, the prices look cheaper. I think the, what we need to find out before making investments is how does this fundamentally affect the Brit Britain over or England over the, the next decade? Yes. yes.
two or three years. And have That's you worked it. that one out yet? Because I'd no. love an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. I mean, they've got a new prime minister in place. She's got sure. a new cabinet in place. So they should, they'll, they'll, fi they'll figure that sort of stuff out. Mm, but in terms of an optimistic view of South Africa, what gives you the courage of your convictions to invest in bricks and mortar? Um, these are things that can't be. I mean, property investors are amongst the most optimistic people in the world. People, you know, when, when Donny Gordon uh, put the foundations in for Santon City in the mid 1970s, people thought he was completely mad, and yeah. that's yielded some fairly decent returns for investors over decades. So I think on a on a bricks and mortar basis, obviously we we think around the the cost of replacement in in in, in the city of Johannesburg, and there's no replacement cost that you can really no. compare to. But more importantly, we, we think of our entrepreneurs, Jonathan Lieben, Louis van der Watt, and we see world-class entrepreneurs. Like people, isn't it? Yeah. Those are the world-class entrepreneurs that we back. When we look at opportunities, as long as it's in financial services, that's something that attracts mm. us. But moreover, the moment we see an entrepreneur that, that we really like values-wise, dr dr uh, drive, ambition, aspiration, that's what we're really after in terms of backing people. What are you looking for next? Where are you fishing? Um, in South Africa, I, I guess to the extent that we're quite, quite uh, well exposed to most of the, of the traditional pocket, short-term life, banking, etc., there are only a few opportunities that, that we are considering. Health? Uh, health we would be one. Well, you, you, you got it through RMI, you got it in Discovery, discover but in RMH? Um, we, f we see the two portfolios as sort of as, as one okay. bigger group. So I think when, we, when I talk about short-term, that's okay. sort of insurance and Discovery, so we, we, we tend to follow a portfolio approach. And, and when we got together two years ago and said we wanted to activate the, these portfolios, we simply said we will put property next to First Rand in RMH. And everything else, which is the more general activity that we want to embark on, will be in RMI. Now, uh, are, the, are, are the wise men still involved? I mean, GT, yes. do a step back. Are they, are they still, are they, they, they bug you a lot? Do they bother you a lot? They never bug me, no. <laughs> <laughs> but Not but even they, when I worked at, at RMB. But they're very so involved. So, GT is the chairman yeah. of both companies. So, we obviously speak uh, quite regularly. Um, Paul and, uh, and, and Lowry are both on the investment committee, which meets monthly. So, we see them often, and they, they get they very wise? excited. They, I would say, as wise. As wise. Well, it's good. You need <laughs> wise people around you when it comes to, to making investments. RMH's chief executive, Hadamon Bosman, will bring you more innovative strategies, more clever ideas, and more people doing incredible things in a market where sometimes angels, uh, we, we, what is the saying? Angels go where, where others fear to tread, or something along those lines. It's too late at night to be philosophical. That's it for this evening. Thank you for watching. Good night.